So if somebody tells you your screen is not lighting up, you know, first to look at this place. If they say, well, your motor is not working, you know to check the DC motor here. If it's a servo motor, you know to check the servo motor right here. Uh, if it's that the board is not lighting up, you know to check the power first. And then you can always check the fuse and all of that. If it's a network issue, you know to come here. If it is a fan issue, you know to come here and all of that. So getting familiar with this board would definitely go a long way in helping you diagnose some of the things that you may have all right guys welcome to another video now in this video we're covering part two of the previous video we made about carriage board but in this video we're going to be looking at the driver board uh, the driver board of your xp600 large format machine is always on this side of the machine that is this side of the machine let me show you what it looks like that is the driver board and it houses so many components that makes your machine function the way it does so let's say that the carriage board which is on top of this place is the one that is responsible for the movement of your machine this way and that way and then beyond that is the mach is the board that really controls the printing of your machine right now but the driver board is the board that basically makes sure every other thing in your machine functions for instance is the board that controls the pump is the board that controls the fan is the board that controls the motor is the board that controls the network cable that i told you in the previous uh, video uh, it's the board that controls the power of your machine. Uh, your 24 volts and your 42 volt board is essentially connected to this place. So today we're going to take a deep dive into the components of your driver board. Uh, and then, you know, try to answer a few questions like, how do you know if your driver board is bad? How do you know if it's a driver board that has a problem and all of that? So I want you to stay tuned. But before that, I want you to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button turn on the notification bell and then uh, don't forget to buy stuff from us uh, we put a lot of work into making sure that there's always content in our YouTube channel but you see how we stay on YouTube is when you either purchase from us or maybe watch our videos and don't skip the ads so if you really want to be uh, a, uh, a, uh, of some benefit to us then you might want to watch the video to the end and then don't skip the ads but beyond that, buy stuff from us, buy print heads, buy large format machines and every of these other machines that we sell so that we can keep staying on YouTube to give you the latest content. All right, now let's get into the video. Now, for the purpose of this video, I brought a spare board uh, to, for, the, for, the, for explanation. So this right here is a copy of the same board that you saw. There might be minor differences here and there with regards to the code and the numbers and all of that but these two boards are essentially the same in this video i want to call your attention to a couple of things that you have to pay attention to when it comes to your board uh, so for instance uh what these ports do what these cables do and all of that so those are the things i'm going to explain right now so let's start from right here you see under this here, it says 24 volts, right? It says 24 volts. So which means that your machine takes in 24 volts into the machine. That's essentially what it's trying to say, that this board takes in 24 volts. Uh, but the fact is that the 24 volts that comes into this board is a combination of uh, 42 volts uh, though it is the 24 volts that passes into here but the way the, the wires are configured it is actually the 24 volts that powers the 42 volts board because it's layered on top of each other so the 42 volts is connected to the 24 volts and then the 24 volts is supplied to here now uh so this is where your power slot goes in 24 volts so this is where you receive the power in the previous video i was trying to explain to you that the carriage board does not have a power socket because the power socket is connected to the driver board next to that you find two fuses here 
uh, the fuses are four amps fuses as you will see in this data sheet that is in your screen right now there are four amp data fuses and one of them is for the 24 volts board and then the other one is for one of them is for the 20 42 volts board this is for 42 volts board while the other is for the 42 volts board that's why i was telling you that there are two primary power boards that come into your driver board the 42 volts and the 24 volts so if your uh, 42 volt board has some kind of problem uh, like a power surge or something like that this is the fuse that is going to cut so essentially this board is designed to not spoil even if you have a power surge this is the first thing that will cut off before anything gets damaged but that doesn't mean that this board doesn't damage but it's you see it's very rare to damage the driver board because of these uh fuses and you would also notice that on the previous video of the carriage board there was no fuse on the carriage board because the carriage board takes power from this place and it's a step down power now next to that you have this port and you can see as it's written it's written j7 and it says to carrier board so which means that this is the where the cable that goes into carriage board goes in so the cable of the carriage board will connect to the other side of the carriage board and then come to connect to this place so the connection that we have here is what takes power from this place and then sends it to that board next to that we have uh the j18 board j17 board which is essentially the servo motor board uh in this current configuration my machine does not use a servo so it uses a dc next to that we have the j16 board which is the paper motor board when they say paper motor board they're talking about the motor that controls these rollers right this roller is controlled by a certain motor and it's called the stepper motor motor stepper motor so this stepper motor moves one millimeter per second so which means that uh for every one millimeter this tire will roll the thing that makes that roll is the stepper motor and it is controlled by this motor if you have like another machine for instance that uses the y and a different kind of motor you might see two sockets connected to this place uh, that have a certain functionality like that next to that we have the j19 which is essentially the cable that controls the the screen of your machine so let's say the screen of your machine has an issue this is where you look the one that says j19 and say it says it goes to op board the word op board there is the operational board that is the board that controls the screen that is the board that controls this screen right so this is where you would connect it let me show you what it looks like on a connected machine so on a connected machine you have the op board this way so you see that that cable goes all the way down there and then terminates at the back of the screen so this is the screen of your machine right uh, our screens may not be the same but essentially you would definitely have a connection to the board like this you, i don't know if you can see that perfect now before we continue i want you to know that these kinds of configuration that i described will always be true for all senyang boards so the board that I showed you, for instance, on the carriage board is also a Senyang board. The Hosen boards don't look anywhere like this. So in case you get a board that doesn't have similar configurations like this, this video does not apply. So you have to keep that in mind. Now, next to that, we have the network port. So this is essentially where that RJ45 that I was talking about in the previous video comes in. This is what that RJ45 looks like. So this is the RJ45 cable, right? So this is the cable that goes into that slot there and then connects the network from your computer all the way to this board, which of course is this board. So when your computer sends the graphics data on your main top, to the machine essentially you do that communication from this cable to this slot and then this slot sends that information to the carriage board using this particular slot this slot and this place are connected in some type of way now there is however another network cable 
and that is this particular cable right here this cable that says 100 uh, megabyte now this 100 megabyte cable is the one that transmits the uh, network that is the network uh, connection between the carriage board and the driver board so this one takes in the data for the print while this one takes in the network connection between the carriage board and this one so without this cable for instance you're going to always have a connect fail this is what that cable looks like so when you have connect fail on your machine this is usually the cable to look out for of course you know i have not said connect fail is caused by this cable alone but i've said that if you have connect fail this cable is usually one of the culprits that you have to put into consideration now next to that we have this particular motor over here uh my machine now currently doesn't use so much of these cables uh, so let me show you the configuration on my machine so that you can see what and what my machine uses in my machine i use basically these two slots right the first slot and then the second slot now let's go on the other board and i'll show you what those slots do so now you see this first slot which my machine uses is called the j21 now the j21 slot is responsible for the front and back heater of my machine so essentially we have a heating element right here in my machine and then you have a back heater somewhere at the back right here that is somewhere at the back so when you plug the cable down there this the cable that goes in here is the one that controls the heater that is the front and the back heater that's the cable that controls it now next to that my machine uses the j15 which is basically this one and the j15 cable is the cable that controls the capping station that is this particular station right here this station right here so that's the cable that controls it the entire station right here is being controlled by the j15 cable so in case you're wondering where you connect your capping station well this is that slot where you control where you connect the capping station now next to that my machine uses some array of cables on this side so i'm just going to tell you basically what all of these cables do so in case you find some of these connections in your machine you can easily you know you can easily identify what belongs to where now the first of these cables right is the j24 cable now the j24 cable is the one that controls the fan so all large format machines have a fan right in front of here. I had to disable my own fan so that I can be able to make this video. So that fan that is in front of your machine like this, uh, that is in front of your machine right here, that's, this is the cable that controls it. So if your fan is not working, you know to come to this particular uh, slot down there. Then the J9, the J9 cable controls the ink pump so this one here is controlled is the one is the cable that controls the ink pump so if for instance you say your pump is not working you can know to look at this particular slot for your pumping and then the j5 is controlling another ink pump so both of these cables control ink pump so you can put the ink pump in any of these two slots and you would be perfectly fine then the J18 uh, slot is where you have the uh, scraper. Now the scraper is not currently present in my machine. It's supposed to be right here, but it's not present in my machine because my machine uses a static scraper. But I once had a Yinge W series that had a scraper that came all the way from the back and then came comes to scrape. Uh, it would definitely have a motor somewhere at the back. So if your machine has that tiny motor and then your scraper comes forward this is the slot that controls that now a couple of the slots that you can find on this machine is also the j14 so if you find the j14 on your machine the j14 is the one that controls the wiper sensor so let's say there's a sensor that alerts your wiper to move this is where most likely they would be connecting it the j14 then next to that we have the j25 
the J25 is the empty paper sensor. So let's say your machine has uh, a sensor that controls, you know, the feeding of the paper. And so if you don't have that sensor installed, if you have that sensor installed, it will definitely be coming to this slot. And which also means that if you want to disable that sensor, you know very well to come to this place. We have another slot here called the 1000M and it is called uh, it is called the J20. I don't know if you can see that J20. Now the J20 slot is the gigabit Ethernet. So the gigabyte Ethernet is, uh, let's say you want your machine to run at a higher speed and the cable is color, you know, is always different from this type. It is similar to this cable. It's similar to this cable, right? But it's a gigabyte ethernet so this cable is a uh, 100 megabyte ethernet cable but there's another cable that's a gigabit uh, network cable and this is pretty much the slot where you can connect it so if you have a gigabyte ethernet cable you know very well to go to that place. now at the bottom here we have some array of cable of uh, slots as well we have the j11 slot the j11 slots controls the wiper moto uh, while the J6 controls the ink station motor. Uh, then the J4 controls the paper motor as well, which is again the stepper motor. So which means this slot and this slot uh, both are for paper. And then the J8, this particular cable, is the DC motor. So the DC motor is the motor that controls the movement of your machine. So this is the DC motor. So that the DC motor is the one that makes your machine go east west. Let me show you what a DC motor setup looks like on my machine. This is the other end of a DC motor. So a DC motor is connected on the other side and is controlled by this particular belt. So if you move this cable, it's going to move your carriage board forward and backward. So that's the DC motor. So if you ever wonder what dc motors do in your machine that's pretty much what they do so that's pretty much it guys uh for a comprehensive guide of this you can follow the data sheet that you see on your screen as i'm reading this out for you uh all of what i'm doing is just so you can know what to quickly look at if somebody tells you the driver board then you can just look at this video to check uh these are some of also first aid things you can always quickly do to be able to check whether you know it's your driver board that is bad so if somebody tells you your screen is not lighting up you know first to look at this place if they say well your motor is not working you know to check the dc motor here if it's a servo motor you know to check the servo motor right here uh if it's that the board is not lighting up you know to check the power first and then you can always check the fuse and all of that there's a network issue you know to come here if it is a fan issue you know to come here and all of that so getting familiar with this board will definitely go a long way in helping you diagnose some of the things that you may have so that's it guys i hope this has helped you if it has i want you to hit the subscribe button hit the like button turn on the notification bell and i'll see you in another video bye take care